Hi, everybody. Joe Chaffee here. Weather in five, five days and five minutes on this Sunday afternoon, the 17th of December. And coming up tonight on the Joe and Joe Weather Show, of course, we're going to have all the latest on this major storm that is moving up the eastern seaboard. That's at 7.35 p.m. Eastern time. So I want to go through just a couple of things in regards to watches and warnings and, and so on. And I know most of you have the understanding that, uh, you know, this sort of stuff, it does happen and uh, the warnings are out there. And if it turns out the weather in your area is not uh, quite uh, what was uh, forecast, in other words, you don't get the uh, turmoil that you anticipated, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Uh, but uh, we all have to be cautious over wide geographic areas. And we've got watches and warnings to help us move along in all of this. So we've got high wind warnings up for uh, Long Island, uh, including Brooklyn and Queens, which I know politically is outside of Long, what's considered Long Island, but geographically, Brooklyn and Queens are on Long Island. Uh, wind advisories for the remaining New York counties uh, and uh, also for uh, the counties uh, into uh, parts of New Jersey. Uh, we've got flood watches for the Hudson Valley for New York City and points west. Wind advisories for the state of Connecticut and also for the much of the lower Hudson Valley. And the flood watches also extend southward through New Jersey. Uh, all of the state of New Jersey, much of the eastern half of Pennsylvania, down into eastern Maryland uh, and uh, into northeastern Virginia. In fact, when we uh, I'll, I'll go wider in just a second. Uh, but I also want to indicate the fact that we do have coastal flood watches up uh, for uh, Long Island and also for South Coastal Connecticut back to Westchester County. Coastal flood advisories are up today for the New Jersey counties. They're getting uh, some high tide uh, minor issues there. So they've got the coastal flood advisories from the high tides of today. The critical high tide is going to be tomorrow morning's high tide because uh, the timing of the storm being a little bit slower means that that south wind is going to hold up for much of the time uh, in uh, all of this, and that might uh, create, I think, areas of moderate coastal flooding uh, for the high tides tomorrow morning. So we're going to keep an eye on the storm track. Very important. Flood watches are up for the southern half of Maine, just about all of New Hampshire and Vermont, uh, much of uh, northern to eastern, and I should say northern New York, northeastern New York, uh, and also down to parts of southern New York, including the Catskills, uh, into Pennsylvania. And you see those flood watches actually extend into eastern Virginia and western and central North Carolina. This has been very good news, by the way, for western North and South Carolina getting into that heavy rain. There's a lot of, you know, the drought conditions here are being relieved now after back-to-back -back weekends of some heavy rainfall. We have wind advisories for uh South Carolina, for southeast Georgia, and also for the east coast of uh, Florida. And also wind advisories are up for the mountains of western Virginia and into western North Carolina. So that's all with the major storm. Um, some uh, winter weather advisories up for southeastern Ohio because on the back side of this tomorrow, they're probably going to see some snow break out there. And also on the, the uh, shores of Lake Michigan. Uh, on, on the uh, western Michigan side and also on the upper peninsula. So really a lot going on from that respect. There is there is a satellite view. Uh, the storm center is uh, straddling along the South Carolina coast this afternoon, kind of inching its way northeast, north northeastward. Uh, you can sort of you can see the well-defined rotation here uh, from the upper features as they swing up uh, to move up the coast. We also have this upper trough that's diving down through the Western Great Lakes. That's part of the equation, and all of this lifting up to the northeast. So clearly, we have a lot more to go. In fact, as we look at the radar. It hasn't really gotten started yet in the Northeast. Starting to see the radars pick up with some uh, lead uh, light showers that are coming in from off the ocean. Some of this is reaching the ground. Some of it isn't. Uh, then we've got some heavier rain on the radar. This is as of 2 p.m. Eastern time, by the way. Uh, running in areas on the Canada side, uh, Toronto, uh, for example, uh, raining there in points north. Uh, also in southwestern New York, western Pennsylvania, eastern Ohio, down into West Virginia. And then you see what's going on with the low center, 
uh, the this well-defined band uh, moving uh, up through central North Carolina. Very heavy rains with this, and that even extends into southeast Virginia. Then uh, running that uh, into west central North Carolina, into southern and southeastern Georgia. You don't often see the curvature on the radars like this. So whenever you do see them, it sort of tells you that there's something serious going on here. We also have some heavier thunderstorms that have developed off the South Carolina coast that are kind of pivoting around. So all of this uh, is going to be moving, uh, again, uh, north northeastward. The low center is going to straddle up the coast and then work its way northward from there, going all the way up. Uh, through New Jersey, and eventually this low center will probably pass close to New York City and then hot, head up the Hudson Valley. So we're looking for that to happen, uh, the low reaching New York City, sometime around 10 or 11 a.m. on Monday, and then continuing northward. Again, that's a critical time with regards to uh, what's going to be, going to, going to be happening uh, with uh, tidal concerns. Uh, now, uh, the WPC folks, in terms of rainfall, we're seeing uh, large extended areas of rain uh, of two and a half inches plus in parts of Maine and New Hampshire, uh, southern New England, also in southwestern New England, into the Hudson Valley, uh, New York City, points southward through New Jersey, a little bit less maybe right near the immediate coast, but I still think every bit of two inches should fall for just about everybody, and there will be some three-inch-plus amounts in some places. And then that extends all the way down through eastern Virginia, eastern North Carolina, and into South Carolina. A lot what's falling, uh, this was actually the forecast from 7 a.m. Uh, this morning. Uh, was the starting time and now the WPC has now updated it for that forecast it just they just updated it I just refreshed it and you can see the southern areas have gotten much of that rain so that that's why it tails off there but from uh, the Delmarva Peninsula north and east uh, into New England it pretty much remains the same as it was before you know this area of red two it to two and a half inches plus and maybe some three inch amounts in some places also we're going to see some uh, over the next seven days, uh, rain uh, in the uh, central and western Gulf states and on up into the southern plains. And that's good for this area here in the uh, middle, lower Mississippi Valley because of the drought conditions that they've had to endure. So we're looking at inch and a half to two and a half inch amounts in this large area. And a lot of rain for California up and down the state, uh, which is with, with as much as two inches going all the way down uh, to San Diego. So. Uh, everybody's getting rain, and when it comes to snow, uh, this is the probability for at least two. And this is going to come later tomorrow, tomorrow night, into Tuesday, as uh, the, a deep upper trough moves through. And we've got this cold, you know, quick shot of colder air behind this. It's not a big deal in terms of the amount of cold air we're talking about. But uh, these are the probabilities for at least a couple of inches. Southwestern New York to northeastern Ohio. Also in the uh, Appalachians, uh, we're seeing uh, probabilities for at least two uh, southwest PA uh, down into uh, southern West Virginia and then continuing uh, into uh, uh, western North Carolina. No big deal because if you look at much of the country from the standpoint, from the standpoint of snow, uh, there really isn't very much. And from the California system, uh, there's a high probability in the next 72 hours that we could see a few inches of snow, if not more in the uh, in the Sierra Nevada. So let's run through a couple of models here. I've got the latest HRRR model, which is only going to take us uh, to 4 o'clock Monday morning. And I'll just roll it back to where we are now. And you can see the low is uh, just kind of even with the... Uh, the southern uh, po portion of the South Carolina coast. Uh, it's uh, moving uh, moving north northeastward, straddling the coastline. So by 8 o'clock tonight, the leading edge of the steadier rain should be at about New York City, and there'll be some more showers breaking out to the north uh, in, in New England. You've got very heavy rains, southern uh, Delmarva Peninsula covering much of southern Virginia into western North Carolina. Then that pushes further north. Now, at 1 a.m., I'm thinking, let's let's just to make it easy, say midnight to noon for most areas. The further south you are, it'll be a little bit sooner. Further north you are, it'll be a little bit later. But that'll be the, about the worst of it. And in terms of the winds, the gradient gets very tight uh, during uh, the hours be after midnight, uh, particularly for southern New England, Long Island, and coastal New Jersey. Uh, the low continuing to just kind of 
uh, struggle along. I'm going to switch over to the NAM model at this point so we can take a look at that. And uh, you see heavy rains here at 4 a.m. in the Hudson Valley, northern New Jersey, across Connecticut and Rhode Island. Uh, then the low moves on northward to southern New Jersey by 7 a.m. So we still have this south wind. And then when we get to uh, uh, 10 a.m., uh, which is right here, the low is just halfway up the New Jersey coast. So we're still getting the south wind, and now it's coming into high tide times for uh, much of the areas in the, uh, of southern New England. The wind shift has occurred uh, from New York City south and west by noontime, so that'll be good news. The water will get pushed out. And then finally, the rain should start to, should come to an end. It looks like the back edge of the rain reaches New York City around 1 p.m. and then moves on up through New England during the afternoon. And you can see the snow, by the way, that increases in the mountains of uh, West, uh, West Central Pennsylvania down into West Virginia and Western North Carolina. You're also going to get it to some lake effect uh, Monday night and on Tuesday. I do want to point out that um, SPC, the Storm Prediction Center, uh, with respect to uh, uh, severe weather uh, for the rest of today and into the overnight, and we now also have a working tornado watch up for much of uh, eastern North Carolina, uh, this is the area of marginal to slight risk that they have for today, uh, and this goes uh, up until 7 a.m. tomorrow. And you'll notice that the general thunderstorm area has now been pushed up into upstate New York and into, into, into central New England. And then as we look at tomorrow, tomorrow morning, uh, with low going by, this is where the Storm Prediction Center has now added a marginal risk of severe weather for much of coastal uh, and eastern New Jersey, New York City, Long Island, the lower Hudson Valley, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and into portions of southeastern Massachusetts. So, And that kind of makes sense that they would have done that considering um, what, uh, what we're dealing with. So look for weather conditions to continue to deteriorate as we go through uh, the rest of today, and particularly tonight uh, with the worst of it, say, between midnight and noon for much of eastern Pennsylvania to southern New England. Uh, don't forget the Joe and Joe Weather Show tonight is at 7.35 p.m. Eastern Time, and we will go through all of this and much more and take a peek at what's out there in the long range as we get closer to Christmas. So have a great rest of your Sunday afternoon.